the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant. Let's take a look at the career of Andre the Giant in the magazines. But before we do that, let me back up until the last video of Ric Flair we did. This was the video magazine that I forgot to show on the video. Uh, this would be Flair's last magazine cover uh, just after he had won the world championship back at Uncensored 99 in the cage match against Hogan. I uh, misplaced it and, and forgot to add it to the video. I said I would throw it into the beginning of the next one. So PWI, um, Oh, August of 1999 is the uh, issue, and there is a color section uh, of this uh, as well. All right, so moving on now, the, <clears throat> the eighth wonder, Andre the Giant. Before he was the eighth wonder of the world, he was Jean Ferré, and starting out in 1966, um, like any other video we've done on a uh, particular wrestler, we're not going to cover every single magazine cover he was on, but pretty much I've got every single issue he was on here um, because there wasn't as many as I thought there was going to be. I thought he would be on a lot more, uh, but he wasn't. Um, he started in 66. His first cover wasn't until 1972. Um, that's until he started making his rounds up in North America and Canada. Um, he was first mentioned in a issue of The Ring magazine, February 1968, and he's not on the cover, but here is the earliest picture known of Andre, uh, and it says on the small uh, side, uh, the gigantic 280-pound Jean Ferre, the woodsman turned wrestler after one year of uh, wrestling in the business, he has pinned many opponents his trainer off to his right. Doesn't say who his trainer is, uh, not sure who it is, but here is a young look at a young, slim, muscled Andre the Giant. Um, again, now this has him at 280 pounds. Uh, as kayfabe has it in many sports, as it's not legitimate, they can they have their way of you know very loosely, uh, very loose facts. I should say, you know, it's they call it lies, you call it stretching the truth. Um, not like professional sports where they really give you an actual size and, si and a weight. Uh, Andre's size changes uh, throughout his career. Um, and it wasn't because of his, his uh, well, I guess a little bit had to do with his illness, uh, acromegaly, but um, a lot of it was lies. So, I mean, he, when he first came in, in 1966, they had him at six foot 10. Uh, that's what he uh, started out as. Uh, in 68, he was six foot 11 and a half. In 71, he was seven foot. In 72, he was uh, seven foot two. Uh, by the time he got to New York, he was seven foot four. So the actual size of him that's legitimately uh, documented on a French passport had Andre at seven foot two. Uh, that was the only legal document showing his actual size. Um, even that was up for debate by someone saying that that was not necessarily accurate either. Who the hell knows? Um, he was up there, though. Uh, he looked a lot taller than he was. He's somebody that you will never be able to appreciate how big he really was unless you actually seen him in person. I seen him when I was 12 years old. I was lucky enough to shake hands with him as he was walking to the ring to face Blackjack Mulligan, and it was just a shocking sight to see this mammoth I mean, girth, thick, tall, and, you know, four inches of hair uh, made him even look taller. I mean, what a giant guy. And I was, you know, me and my cousin both, lucky enough to both shake his hand on the way out of my very first uh, wrestling match that I ever went to, um, was able to shake hands with him, which, which was really uh, cool for me. Um, but he would not be on a cover of a magazine until 1972, August of Wrestling Monthly. Before... 72 prior to 66 on its way up there's a lot of history there that's being cut out and it's a shame none of it's documented in any magazines except for japan 
I wasn't going to dig through all the Japanese issues and show you all the titles that he won there. Uh, it's just too much. It's too, too much to dig through, and it's really hard to get these magazines in order to make these kind of a videos. I know I said I was going to do a Dusty Rhodes video, and please bear with me. Uh, it, getting these together to make videos is brutal. Uh, digging these out, finding them all in order, and putting his history together uh, to bring these videos to you guys, you know, may not sound like much, but it is really time consuming to get this material together and then to get my facts straight so I present it in a way that's proper um, so Dusty is coming so I just wanted to do one for Andre and today I thought was the best day to do it so his first cover August of 1972 uh, he made his his rounds in Japan in 1970 uh, was his first tour and he would be with the IWE and he would become the IWA champion there um, before all that um, you know I'll discuss some his matches along the way from 72 down to, to uh, 66 just to keep it moving forward and I'll just discuss it I will go backtracking somewhat and explain a few things like who slammed him who pinned him all that kind of stuff as we go on so his first cover on an American issue August of 1972 wrestling monthly and at this point he is now going um, he had a several different names it, it was it was um, uh, a, a monster Rushimov in Japan, it was Jean Ferre in Canada. It was uh, Andre Rushimov in 72 when he went to the, to the Vershans in Montreal. And it was Andre the Giant when he went up north uh, to the WWF. Um, so uh, moving on, his next magazine cover would have been October 72, going by Jean Ferre. And now you'll see seven foot four, and uh, Don Leo Jonathan at a six foot nine. This was an incredible feud in Canada. Uh, um, it, it burns me up when I hear different people talk about Andre, especially people who were never there and they're just giving their agenda like the McMahons do. When I heard Shane McMahon say, if it wasn't for my uh, grandfather, uh, uh, Andre wouldn't have been anyone. And uh, he was wrestling in front of 10 to 25 to 75 people until my grandfather got a hold of him. And then he became a household name. Well, tell that to the uh, thousands of Canadians that seen him go against uh, Don Leo Jonathan in three different bouts when they were getting 25 to 35 to uh, upwards of 40,000 people um, at the uh, shows to watch these two battle it out up north uh, in Canada. Um, great battles that I wish these guys would have battled more uh, in, in, in America. I've only got to see them on, on tape, uh, him in a six-man tag, uh, and also a, a tag team match, but never against uh, Don Leo one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, but what a colossal uh, giants these two guys are, and you just don't make them that big anymore. Um, this is a, not a side-by-side. -side. They look even in height right here. Uh, they're not. This was just a, a photoshopped cover. They're not actually posing together for uh, this magazine cover. His next cover, May of 1973, <clears throat> uh, Wrestling Monthly once again, and here he is against the Vachon. I'm not sure which one. I think it's Butcher. I'm not 100% sure. And they got him here as seven foot four. And this is when he was in the Vachon's territory in Montreal, Canada, and bouncing back and forth between Montreal and Vern Gagne's uh, AWA. And here he is. Uh, Wrestling Review, December 1973, and what would be his classic look with the big afro and the uh, brown vest that would he would wear throughout the 70s uh, with uh, Edward Carpentier. Carpentier tells a ridiculous story of how he discovered Andre the Giant. He was driving uh, his car uh, through the mountains of the French Alps and down came a tree and crushed uh, in front of, the, of his car, just missing his car. And out came this giant walking from the woods and picked up the tree and, and moved it so he could get by in his car. And he says, wow, you know, you should be a wrestler. So he jumped into the car with him and that's how he discovered him. Uh, no, none of that is, is true. <laughs> so uh, 1973, December, Andre on the cover with Carpentier. Wrestling Review, 1973, Andre is on the cover getting uh, weighed on a scale. Um, a really good shot down here of the destroyer with a bloody mask. <clears throat> you don't see very many mass wrestlers that blade it. <clears throat> Excuse me. This would be Andre the Giant's first cover uh, in Japan. 
uh, like I said, he has been wrestling there, what is this, 1974. Um, he would be there a good four years now at this point. Uh, he was already a champion of the, uh, the IWA uh, tournament. He would, uh, I think there's some pictures in here that I'd show. Here it is, <clears throat> this is his first uh, um, stepping into the ring at Madison Square Garden um, before he stepped through the ropes for his first match at the Garden, which is a great shot. Um, here's just some other color shots of Andre uh, in action that we really didn't get to see color shots only on the cover of the magazine. And of course, our Japanese friends have gotten fantastic shots all in color. <laughs> Uh, great pictures of Andre in there, and it discusses his matches uh, as he's getting more popular now throughout the world. Uh, here he is on the cover of um, Wrestling World Fall of 74. This is also in the ring of Madison Square Garden for his first appearance. That's his first appearance time uh, in the ring <clears throat> and uh, encapsulated on the cover of Wrestling World. The Wrestler, uh, March of 1974. Who can stop Andre the Giants? <clears throat> 74 Wrestling News. Here he is with Pedro Morales uh, in the back uh, locker room area. And uh, there was something that, that about this wasn't from the garden. I, I can't remember where this photo was taken from. Uh, I don't want to look inside. But um, February 1974, the wrestler. And here he is against uh, Blackjack Lanza. <clears throat> always liked this cover. Uh, looked like I always thought the girl was like you know combing his hair or, or fixing him up. <laughs> uh, she's standing on a uh, on a chair. Andre the Giant, a proud to be a giant, on the cover of Sports Review, July '74. Rough uh, issue to find. Um, I've looked many times for an upgrade. It's hard to find this particular issue. Uh, it's it's a real good shot of Andre there. <clears throat> Wrestling Yearbook, another shot of uh, Andre against Black Jack Lanza in 1974, issue number six, Yearbook. Here is Andre on the cover of a IWE program, a very rare IWE program. The company was not uh, around for very long, and of course, they had the IWA champions, and this has got Andre's first championship and here he is with uh, Carl Gotch to his left and uh, Billy Robinson to the right. This was the third uh, tournament uh, champion and Andre uh, won the tournament beating both men and uh, Robinson won the first two uh, championships uh, prior to the third and uh, Andre went ahead on points. Uh, both men uh, beat him, both men slammed him uh, and uh, uh, um, several times, uh, you know, it was reported that Andre has never been slammed, never been pinned, and none of that is true. Uh, we'll go through a lot of that as I move forward here. Um, I mean, his, his first loss was against Kendo Nagasaki um, in 1967. And it's not the same Kendo Nagasaki you're thinking of. It's a, the original Kendo Nagasaki, who was actually a Brit, uh, who wrestled for um, World of Wrestling uh, in, in the UK. Anyone who's never seen World of Wrestling uh, and you're a wrestling fan, please do yourself a favor and look up World of Wrestling. Some of the best wrestling you, you, you could ever see on television. Um, it wasn't popular in the States. No one really knew about it. But with YouTube, you can check that out. There's some fantastic matches there. And they treated it real. They treated it with respect. Um, this is just a figure of Andre, the Japanese made, of him winning that tournament that I just showed you the pictures of. And here he is um, with the, uh, the ribbon and the championship. It also comes with a small little beer can uh, like he's pictured in Sports Illustrated with the bottle of Budweiser or whatever it was, Natural Light. Um, but yeah, just a cool figure that the Japanese made. And they have him listed as seven foot two, 520 pounds. You can see how the each company, each promoter, uh, each magazine comes up with their own size of the guy, right? <laughs> Okay, back into America and Andre taking on all comers down uh, out rather at the uh, Los Angeles uh, uh, yearly uh, battle royal and Andre takes on 21 wild men 1974 issue number seven wrestling yearbook.
great shot of Andre on the cover with Pedro Morales, Worldwide Wrestling Federation champion, soon to be losing that title uh, after this photo, not, not too long after. And uh, Andre the Giant, this is your life, and it's got his all his kayfabed uh, life and and uh, and story in this issue, November 1974. Wrestling Monthly takes you back to Japan, and here's your first look at Andre and what would be a good 15-year run rival uh, with Antonio Inoki. Uh, these guys would battle on uh, all through the rest of the 70s, up to the middle part of the 80s, and uh, Inoki would be also be one of the men who slammed Andre the Giant, also pinned Andre the Giant. Um, you know what, pinned, I'm not sure. I'm not, I know he's beaten him several times by count out. He might not have pinned, he definitely slammed him. He might not have pinned him though. Um, at this point, pretty much Andre was strictly for new, uh, working for New Japan at this point, and he would finish off his career. He would make one appearance with the Giant Baba uh, later on in All Japan in a tag, but pr predominantly he was a New Japan guy. <laughs> Andre, uh, there is a secret Japanese plan to destroy Andre. Cover of Ben Strong, September 1975. Cover of Wrestling Superstars. And Andre now, first time, is going by the eighth wonder of the world on a cover of the magazine. This is also issue number one for Wrestling Superstars. A lot of people thought it started in 77. Uh, some people thought it started in 76. There is one issue in 76, uh, and this is the first premiere issue uh, of Wrestling Superstars in summer of 75. One of my favorite covers of Andre, going back for a repeat at the uh, Battle Royal in Los Angeles, and he's on the cover facing 20 men, and Andre comes out the victor. The man who made Andre go berserk. I thought it was the Sheik. It does not look like the Sheik on the cover. I haven't read this issue in a long time. I, th I thought it was the Sheik, um, but I, I might be wrong. Um, Jen, I'm sorry, uh, what is this? No month, just year. Um, 1975 yearbook, issue number 13. He's on a lot of yearbooks. Yeah, issue number 12. For 1975 yearbook, Andre will never be a champion. At this point, he has already held a couple of small titles uh, in Japan, the tag team title and uh, the IWA tournament champion. Here he is on the cover of Winter 1975 Wrestling Picture Book. I don't know if this is the first issue of Picture Book. I want to say it's the first Picture Book issue in 75. Um, he's on the cover holding up Chief J. Strombo. Uh, it, he was on several of the picture books, but I, I'm pretty sure that was issue number one. I should have labeled that. Inside Wrestling, with a different font here on Inside Wrestling, you don't see this at all, except for this one issue where it's small like that. And Andre has got the dominant shot standing on the chest of superstar Billy Graham in December 75. I'll crush the life from Billy Graham. Andre on the cover of June 75. It's also got the exclusive coverage and photos of the Giant Baba uh, beating Jack Briscoe for the NWA world title. <clears throat> Andre and Bruno San Martino. Will Andre destroy the legend of Bruno San Martino? Nope, I don't think anybody can do that. November of 1975. <laughs> October 76, Andre the Giant. Once again, great shot. Uh, another shot from the uh, uh, Los Angeles territory. Andre the Giant, Big Book of Wrestling, January 1976. The Washington Redskins scout, seven foot four, Andre the Giant. Rumor was they wanted him for a field goal blocker. Um, I remember hearing that as a kid. I don't know how true all that is, I'm not sure. Um, 
I'm sure he would make a hell of a lot more money as a wrestler and, you know, doing what he wants to do and less time for uh, training and more time for just wrestling, partying, and doing his drinking like he used to do before his matches. Uh, the popular wrestling, November 1976, on the cover with Ernie Ladd. Him and Ernie Ladd had some great matches uh, in the Mid-South, uh, Bill Watts, UWF territory. Uh, also, your first look at Ric Flair on the cover of a magazine, um, November 76, <clears throat> popular wrestling. Winter of 76, wrestling superstars, Andre's wrestling's biggest attraction. Another great cover, Andre Ox Baker, the night they booed Andre and sheared the ox. And um, they, they, the way they shot this down and then coming up to a shot just makes Andre look that much bigger. It makes Ox Baker look like a midget, even though Ox is bent over to the corner. Ox was no small man by any means. That's the annual 76, issue number two. Sports Review, September 76, another shot of Andre. Uh, Andre meets his greatest match. Um, 1976, yearbook number 17, Andre the Giant. What turned Andre into a killer was the tagline, wrestling album number one. Okay, maybe I'm confusing uh, picture book for album. Um, some of those, after a while, they got so confusing. There were so many issues that came out in the 70s from the uh, Stanley Weston uh, company. So wrestling album number one, Andre the Giant front and center. Um, this is actually the same place he posed for the cover with, uh, with Strombo. Uh, it's just a separate shot of him by himself now. Um, looking for a date. I don't see it. I know it's 76. I just don't, there's nothing written on the cover. Actually, the back I have written down, issue number one, 1975. All right, so issue number one, 1975, no date and no, uh, and no month on it if you're looking for it. So that might make it difficult for you guys to find if you're trying to search for it. If you go on eBay, just type in wrestling uh, album number one, 75, it, it should come up. Wrestling picture book, summer of 76. That's him and uh, Bruno San Martino. Andre on the cover of Inside Wrestling. Uh, January 1976 is the end near for Andre the Giant nope not quite again battling it out with the cat Ernie Ladd the king Ernie Ladd February 1976 inside wrestling inside wrestling again notice the uh, the font change now to the fancy style of inside wrestling this was the previous uh, look here and then now it has changed uh, to the more fancier style that would continue on throughout the uh, 80s. Um, September 1976, and also uh, continuing the battle with Ernie Ladd in the headlock. Ernie Ladd was a huge dude too. Um, Andre would become the $6 million man's Bigfoot, an alien creature. <laughs> um, May of 1976, yeah, several times I was gonna have Lee Major sign this issue and his line was just so ridiculously long. Um, the last time I seen Lee Majors was probably 10 years ago. Um, not seen him, but in the same room as him at, at a convention. And uh, I just, I just both times I was like, I, I'm not waiting this long, forget it, man. Um, kind of wishing I did now because chances of me kept getting the sign by him are, are like slim to none because I really don't do these shows anymore. And I'm not even sure if he does them anymore. He's gotta be up there in age. Andre and Ivan Putsky in July, 1976. <clears throat> The Wrestler, November 76, Andre's title hopes get crushed by the Russian bear, Ivan Koloff. Bruno San Martino taking on uh, Bruiser Brody. Off to the side, Andre the Giant wins world title. <clears throat> and the bottom says only for five minutes. Against Nick Bockwinkle, they're talking about the AWA world title. And uh, Andre had won... <clears throat> excuse me, by count out and uh, was, uh, was given the belt and then realized, uh, you know, uh, you can't win the belt on a uh, count out as if they didn't know that already, I guess, right? But that's the story inside. Andre takes another trip back to Japan to battle Antonio Inoki. This is a program from 1977 for a match uh, with Inoki 
1977. I don't have the actual, oh, February 1977. Pretty rare uh, program there from uh, New Japan Pro. Uh, Sports Review Spring 77 here with uh, Sheik Adnan Al Casey, who was also uh, White Wolf and Chief J Strombo. There's a funny story. I'm, I'm going to butcher it probably. I just guess it caught me off guard when I noticed this. But uh, Sheik Adnan Al Casey in, I don't know, it was in 71 or 70, um, was going to Iraq. He apparently was good friends with Saddam Hussein. They grew up together. And uh, he was invited to come wrestle for the 19th, for the 50th uh, anniversary of the um, Iraqi um, military. And he, they wanted to have a match. So uh, he invited Andre to come for the match. And uh, it was to, he was to battle it out at the festival that they had. And uh, apparently Saddam wasn't smart to the business. And uh, like many people weren't, I thought it was real. And... Uh, Saddam telling Sheikh Adnan Al Casey, um, "Don't worry, uh, we got you covered. If he wins this match, he won't leave the ring alive. Hope you know." And he lifts up his shirt, and he's got a a, uh, a solid gold pistol, and he says, "I'll unload six bullets in his head before he even sets foot out of the arena." So um, <laughs> Sheikh Adnan telling Andre the story. It was supposed to be the best out of two out of three falls, uh, and decided to, to beat Andre twice. Uh, rather than give Andre one of the wins, and uh, this was one of the wins were uh, by pinfall. Um, he said at the end of the match, the guns were shooting off. He wasn't sure. Andre was scared to even stand straight up um, because he thought he doesn't know if he was shooting at him or not. But they were just shooting off the guns at in, in the celebration. That's apparently is all in uh, Sheikh Adnan Al Casey's book. <clears throat> 1977, Bruno San Martino on the annual winter issue with Bruno San Martino. He's going to help Bruno regain his championship. <clears throat> Andre the Giant on the cover, June 77. The fans expect too much from me. Andre being outshadowed by the females in the bikinis of the apartment house wrestling, September of 77. A really missed opportunity for a fantastic cover here. Uh, Andre the Giant and King Kong Bruiser Brody on the cover of November 77. Uh, these issues with the apartment girls are pretty hard to find when they're dominating the cover like this, and they're pretty expensive uh, if you can find them. Um, but uh, man, I wish that was a full cover. That would have been great. <clears throat> 1977 Winter Annual Andre on the cover. This was the um, an issue of the. This was pretty cool, and one of the um, one of the uh, one of our friends at the channel had mentioned this, the um, the, the Stato chart, and uh, they would go by strength, um, uh, your ability to wrestle, uh, uh, how, how how much carriage you had, uh, how your speed, uh, your stamina, your opponents, and we break it all down for, from numbers, and then we go through and maybe ten different wrestlers inside. It was pretty cool. It's too bad they didn't stick with that. Uh, shortly after. Um, they got rid of it after maybe two issues or so, uh, but these annuals uh, in 77, and I think 78 was the next one that had it, uh, were, were, were pretty cool and pretty interesting to read. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's just the kayfabe stuff like they did for the, like the awards, like Wrestler of the Year and, you know, Rookie of the Year, that kind of stuff. They just had stats, which they call the, the, the computer decided, they said. Um, <clears throat> Fall of 1977, uh, Superstar Graham, I don't want your title, I want you dead. Uh, oh, Andre wins uh, the NWA world title, but they made him give it back. Andre pins Harley Race. Andre leaves the arena with the belt. Uh, the days to follow, he's called into the uh, NWA's office where they show the film when Race's leg was over the ropes and returned the belt to uh, Harley Race. Not sure how true that story is. Uh, not sure if that ever happened that way. I, I can't say one way or the other, but you know, according to the magazine, that's what happened. That is August of 78. <clears throat> Once again, he's on the cover of a Japanese issue with Antonio Inoki. This is a July 1978 issue. <clears throat> Harley Race battling it out with 
uh, Andre in May of 78. This has got Harley slamming Andre uh, in this issue. Another shot on the bottom here of Brody uh, and Andre. Another missed opportunity, kind of, but it's also a fantastic cover of Mil Mascaris, Fall of 1978. Andre on the cover, Sports Review, February 1978. Another Sports Review, March of 78. This is Ric Flair. This is Greg Valentine. Andre's bloodbath against Ric Flair. <clears throat> Apparently they had a few matches down south in the Carolinas. The Oriental Terror, uh, Mr. Fuji against Andre, August of 78. Crazy Luke Graham on the cover, September 78, getting punched in the back by Andre. Andre holding up two midgets on December 78. I thought there was a cover of Andre holding up uh, four women. There is, but it's not on a cover. It was in a program and I couldn't find it. Um, I could have sworn he was on a cover doing that also, but apparently not. Very famous photo. Um, you don't see it very often. You see it for, with a few wrestlers, you see it with a few midgets, but the one with the girls is a pretty cool photo. I should have made it to a cover. Um, Christmas night, December 25th, 1978. Um, what is this? Oh, this is the night uh, Andre and Dusty win the uh, Mid-South uh, uh, Tag Team Champions, the United States Tag Team Champion Tri-State. Uh, we discussed this magazine in several videos now. That is the program to that night. Um, just a few months later in April, uh, Andre would battle for the King Ernie Ladd's um, North American Heavyweight Championship. Ernie Ladd would defend that title uh, of course not pinning andre though uh seven foot four 482 pound andre the giant against the king ernie lad six nine three twenty five expensive issue of wrestling uh, cards of uh, of the wrestlers um andre's card is not in this one uh, it's in the other one later on uh summer of 78 I don't think Andre's rookie cards in that one. Um, July of 79 uh, against Harley Race, Sports Review. He had several battles at Race. Here's a few of them in a row. March of 79, Sports Review. The title match that ended in heartbreak, once again, and hatred. Once again, a heartbreaking loss to Race. <clears throat> Sports Review, May 1979. Harley, I'm sorry, uh, Superstar Graham and uh, Andre the Giant. That is the third um, Valiant Brother, Jerry, uh, on the cover, December 79. Andre on the cover, uh, annual spring of 79. <clears throat> Back with Bruno on the cover, May of 80. Now we're into a new decade. Will be Andre's final decade. For the first time, Andre body slammed. <clears throat> on a cover, summer of 1980, Sports Review, going back to October 6th, 1978. <clears throat> that issue that I told you earlier that um, from Japan also has that slam uh, in that issue. And I'm sorry, I hate to tell you, Hulk Hogan, you are not. I shouldn't say Hulk Hogan, I should say Vince McMahon, who continues to rewrite history. Hulk Hogan was not the first person to slam uh, him. The first person uh, reportedly um, was uh, Kendo Nagasaki in the 1967. Um, but Sheik Adnano Casey also pinned him and slammed him. Strong Kobayashi slammed him. Antonio Inoki, um, Carl Gotch, Billy Robinson. Uh, there's quite a few guys, I believe, wrestling or wrestling two also. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of everybody. He was slammed several times, and he was pinned several times. Um, you know, don't believe everything that you hear the McMahons spew out. That's why it's so important to, to capture these uh, history pieces before they're wiped out forever. Physical media is being wiped out every, every second of every day, and uh, big corporate machines 
who run 90% of the uh, wrestling business are rewriting to their history and their narrative and it, or erasing uh, a lot of the great truth that was out there. And um, it, it's, it's disheartening. It, it, it pisses somebody off big time like me who knows the truth and, and spewing this shit out to people who have like, you know, oh, sure, that's what he said, so it, it's got to be right, you know, and, um, and it's not. And uh, uh, Andre, you know, he has a, has a trail of losses and a trail of slams up until this point, up before 80, what, seven, when they actually claim it to be so. Even when he slammed them on national television in 1980 for their feud before that, so but you know on the front cover this is your only cover that you will see Andre up and over and going down and Harley Race is the man to be credited with the first slam on a magazine cover. I mean, how can you dispute that? You know, it's right there on the cover of a magazine. Um, February 1980, Andre against uh, Jimmy Valiant. That was a TV match from uh, WWF TV Championship Wrestling. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Captain Lou, the night Captain Lou managed Andre the Giant. Um, take it for whatever it's worth. I'm sure it's a, it's a lie. Um, they interview Andre inside the magazine, and Andre was new and green and didn't know any better. And Captain Lou managed him one night in like 1969 or 70 and Captain Lou was yelling and screaming at him because he was following the rules and being too kind and and he realized that Captain Lou wasn't the manager for him and that's just a silly story uh, to go along with the Stanley Weston stories uh, January 1980 <clears throat> Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant together on the cover of a wrestling magazine, Wrestling News, this is uh, 1980, getting ready to uh, square off at their, their feud on TV at Shea Stadium at Madison Square Garden several times. A very sought after issue for some reason. I don't know why. It's hard to find this sucker. I was told by a few people that this sells for a lot of money. Andre and Blondie, 1980, June, on the cover of The Rings Wrestling. Andre's first PWI cover, September 1980, against Big Bobby Duncombe, taken from Madison Square Garden. <clears throat> I had that program in here too, I think. I did just, it might be a couple out of, out of order a little bit. Uh, another wrestling yearbook. He was on a lot of yearbooks. Uh, Andre is on the cover of 1980 Spring. <laughs> Uh, yes, this is, I had this out of order. This is the program uh, for the Bobby Duncombe uh, match that the magazine cover you just seen, April 21st, 1980. I have a few programs of Andre at 80. Um, this is uh, Hogan versus Andre at Madison Square Garden, September 22nd, 1980. Andre on the cover of Sports Review, uh, April 1980. <clears throat> And here is the match, Hogan and Andre at the Garden, on the cover of Sports Review, December 1980, the War of the Super Titans. <clears throat> Andre versus the only wrestler that ever scared the shit out of me as a kid, um, Killer Khan. Man, that guy used to scream, and uh, he had this yell about him and that scary look. He used to freak. I'm glad I never seen him in person because at that age I was like that was like the only wrestler that like scared the shit out of me. I'm like this guy is like gonna kill somebody. Uh, then when he broke Andre's leg and uh, and there Andre was carried out, we we're like holy shit, man. Uh, it was just kayfabe was a great thing. Um, it, it's it's a shame that people can't experience that anymore. They took all the fucking fun out of it, right? Yeah, I know magic is fake too, but you know I don't want to know how you did the fucking trick. Just just do the trick and let me suspend my belief, you know. But I guess people can't do that. They need to, uh, you know, expose everything. Uh, Andre on the cover, July of 1981. 1981, uh, Grapevine program from Championship Wrestling from Florida. Um, these two, what can they do with these two guys? And what they can do is partner up and become Florida Tag Team Champions. Dusty Rhodes, Andre the T uh, Giant win the Florida Tag Team Championship. And this is a cover of uh, the Grapevine 1981 from Florida. One of the few titles Andre would get. And they were mostly tag teams <clears throat> to protect his undefeated, quote-unquote, undefeated uh, record. 
<clears throat> now, he may have been undefeated as Andre the Giant, but when he was Monster Rushimov and he was uh, Jean Ferret, he was most definitely pinned. Um, <clears throat> as far as going by the Andre the Giant name, when McMahon gave him that name, that might be true. I don't know. But, uh, you know, as a person, you know, as a wrestler, Andre was pinned a bunch of times. <clears throat> Uh, Andre on the cover of uh, Superstars of Wrestling 1981. Uh, this is the one that has his rookie card in them. Uh, great cover. I just always love that cover of Hogan and Andre. Uh, love it so much, I have it twice. Um, again, Andre and Hogan, April of 1981. <clears throat> Best of the wrestler, taking another look back at the uh, race and Andre the matches. <clears throat> one of my uh, favorite uh, feuds because it was one of the earlier ones that I remember best and it brought me to my very first live appearance. Uh, first live appearance, I'll just take it out of work because I'm talking about it, it's here somewhere. Um, wrestling scene. Uh, I was on my way to the matches that night for my very first time uh, in the summer of 82. And uh, I picked up this issue that morning, and these two were the main event that night. Uh, it just brings back so much, so many memories when I see this, this issue of Andre versus Blackjack Mulligan, an October issue of uh, 82's wrestling scene, and as well as this issue here. I remember trying to get a magnifying glass and trying to read what his tattoo says. We never knew what the hell it said. Come to find out, I think it was United States Marine Corps later on, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it's just funny things. You see these little things and it takes you right back to, you know, when you were a kid and, and try to discover certain things. Um, December 82, Blackjack Mulligan, and, uh, and what a great feud that was with Mulligan. Uh, Mulligan was awesome. I remember him coming on uh, championship wrestling television and uh, Pat Patterson handing him a couple of apples and he's crushing them with his claw hand. And just as a kid, you see shit like that. You're just like sucked in. It's like, oh my God, look at this guy, you know? Um, superstar, the mass superstar taking on Andre. Uh, I believe this was in Georgia, August of 1982. I'm guessing that's Georgia. I know mass superstar was down there at that time and I know Andre would make his tours. Um, I might be mistaken though. Um, October 82, uh, Andre, this was one of the few bloodier uh, covers you'd see him on, and it was from on, uh, Blackjack Mulligan from The Claw. Uh, that may have been from TV, I'm not sure, because they would put a big red X across the screen to uh, block out the blood, and I used to remember getting so pissed off at the, like, why are they doing this? We want to see the blood, you know? And um, it was just some, some great times, man. You know, you'll never know the pain of wanting to see blood, and you can't see it. You gotta wait for the MSG channel or for it to come on the Spectrum uh, Wrestling on Prism. Uh, that was our cable channel that covered the Philly wrestling. Uh, Andre uh, on the cover. He's not in this on the match. He's just on the cover. March of 82. I think he was out of the territory and coming back at this point. <clears throat> Getting ready to feud with Mulligan. That's kind of out of order, that, that issue again. My programs I should have had set better. Uh, winter of uh, 82, Andre and uh, Anderson on the cover. Andre wins his 1,000th match. Yes, here is another issue, and we've seen it better. USMC, United States Marine Corps, uh, Blackjack Mulligan uh, versus Andre in their feud another year later. Big John Stud uh, squaring off against Andre in one of his better feuds against Stud, listed as seven foot five, 485 against uh, Big John Stud, six foot 10, 364 pounds. Madison Square Garden, and I'm trying to get the date here. This was May 23rd, 1983. Main event, Ivan Koloff, Bob Backlund. Wrestling superstars, Andre uh, on the cover, spring of 84 against the Super Destroyer. Andre in Puerto Rico taking on <clears throat> Abdullah the Butcher. This was a pretty uh, popular shot, it made it to Sports Review. Also made it on a cover of a Lucha magazine as well. Um, I figured I'd just show these two it was enough. July, I'm sorry, January of 1984. Also, Nick Bockwinkle on the corner with the belt. Andre on one of the few wrestling world covers he was on. He wasn't on very many. Um, I believe this was the only one. Uh, 
Oh, no, he was on a couple more later on, but up to this point, August of 84. 1985, believe it or not, this is his only magazine, <clears throat> one issue. It kind of like disappeared. He was on maybe four or five in 84, and now in 85, he's only on one. And uh, it's in April 85, and um, wrestling's main event. <clears throat> what do I, what can you say about this? I'm gonna say it like it is. Um, for those of you know, know, and those of you who don't know, um, 1986, Andre the Giant had a match with Maeda. Maeda was the founder of the UWF in Japan, the, um, which was a shoot organization. Maeda was no joke. The guy was a fighter, the guy could fight. This was before MMA, you know, 1985-86 era. Uh, when he started th this company um, with Tiger Mask and a couple other guys. Um, Maeda was the real deal. Andre the Giant is a giant. He could, you know, kill 100 men in the bar. He could, you know, the stories go on of what Andre can do and couldn't do. Andre got the shit beat out of him, uh, for real, against Maeda. Now, there's several different stories going on here. Um, it was for New Japan... Anoki had some issues with Maeda and how he trash-talked uh, New Japan and the guys because they were too soft. Story was, Anoki told Andre to, uh, you know, don't sell for him <clears throat> and, uh, you know, be stiff. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what Andre did. And it was very unprofessional. <clears throat> you can see Maeda just doesn't want to hit him. He is hitting him kayfabe and... Andre is not selling anything. He refuses to do anything. He refuses to do a wrestling move. He's just standing there coming at him. Um, he tried several things. They went to the ground. <clears throat> Andre kind of just held him and squeezed him. Maeda got back to his feet, and he started kicking the shit out of him. Um, Maeda could have destroyed him. Uh, I really don't care what anybody says. Um, unless you have, have a fighter's eye, uh, you won't identify how brutal the leg kicks were uh, that Andre took. They chopped him down like Paul Varlins got chopped down by Marco Huas in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Same thing comes to mind. Uh, taking his legs out. He could have did anything to him at this point. Andre was, by the several minutes into it, uh, went down a few times from the kicks. And at that point, Maeda could have destroyed him. Just started bashing knees or elbows into his head and, and finished him off. You could tell he didn't want to do it. He kept looking off to the side. It was a very uncomfortable fight. It was legit. It was real. I mean, Andre wasn't selling, and Maeda was really hitting him. Um, it was so bad, Antonio Noki had to come to the ring, interject into the match, and break it up. Um, a lot of controversy. The fans all knew it was real. They all knew they were seeing something very special and something that wasn't supposed to be happening. Um, it may piss a lot of people off on the Andre side because they love Andre and whatever excuses they may have. Uh, truth be told, Andre was very lucky that Maeda didn't take him out and completely ruin his reputation. Um, and he could have easily. He could have easily went behind him and choked him out. Um, you have to see the match in order to understand what I'm saying. Um, if you see those leg kicks and you see the pain Andre was in and how he went down from those leg shots, they hurt. Andre was hurt. And you could tell. You could see it in his face. It was, like I said, it was an uncomfortable watch. Uh, on the cover, <clears throat> 1986, uh, Wrestling Week, uh, Weekly, Pro Wrestling Weekly. Um, you see Andre going down for, you know, what's the, the cardinal sin to block a low-line kick because you're just begging to get crossed across the face and drop at the punch. Um, if you knew anything about MMA, which we didn't know at that time, later on, you know, as fighters progressed, you, see, you realize that you don't block a low kick with your arm, you block it with your leg. Um, the night Andre got beat so badly that he had to come back with a mask on. No, just kidding. Um, very uncomfortable. Uh, Maeda would go on. He would be suspended and leave the company. Um, <clears throat> after that, you know, or was it sh briefly before that, uh, he, he, you know, kayfabe Ricky Choshu in the face, which I don't like Ricky Choshu, and I loved it. But um, he was very controversial, and there was some several shoots uh, involving Maeda. Love him or hate him, the guy could have took on Andre the Giant and respectfully didn't. Um, you be the judge. You guys can check it out. <clears throat> uh, Weekly Pro, Andre, 
as you can see, was not selling any more magazines in 1984 and 5. Uh, in 86 uh, as well as it started to come along. His name was kind of just like under the radar. Uh, what are we going to do? And maybe they come up with this new plan of having the machines. Um, it was you know, hot for about a minute. Um, the mass superstar, I think Blackjack Mulligan was also a machine. Um, that gimmick would go on to make the strong machine who wrestled for another 10 years after. Um, but here's Andre with the mask. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated it. And, you know, it's just another, another WWF gimmick. Um, this is Sports Review, uh, December 86, with all three machines. And this is autographed by the mask superstar. Um, Andre, of course, in the center as the giant machine. I thought it was all right. I mean, it was different. And they made some vignettes over in, in Japan. Uh, the Japanese magazines follow them around uh, in that Japanese issue. And they're going through the town of Tokyo in, in Tokyo with the masks on it. It was pretty cool to read about it in the magazine. Um, the war finally going to uh, Andre's chances of becoming world champion. Andre turns heel. We all know the story, right? <clears throat> and... Uh, I always knew Hogan was going to win, but I had a small, <clears throat> excuse me, glimmer of hope that Andre would, you know, maybe pull it off and, and get it. And then I'm thinking, like, you know, there's no way McMahon's going to give it to him at a WrestleMania. <clears throat> and, um, you know, but we'll find out as, you know, as it happens, wrestling, pro wrestling, illustrated May of 1987, talking about the, uh, the biggest event <clears throat> at that time, WrestleMania three, how the experts see the match going in the wrestler May of 87. And, of course, <clears throat> Andre the Giant gets pinned and slammed. Two things that never happened to him ever up until this point, if you follow the WWF's uh, logic and history. Of course, now you all know the truth. Andre, you know, was pinned many times and slammed many times before. WrestleMania three, Hulk Hogan the winner. And uh, early look at this different belt that Hogan had. Some people love it, some people hated it. I never liked it. It wasn't around for very long, and it would be the one that Andre would win later on. Uh, WrestleMania three makes history. Of course, it was the biggest uh, event at that time for wrestling, uh, 90 some odd thousand. And it was also the last time I would ever turn on the WWF and watch a complete show. <clears throat> I would watch a couple Savage matches here and there. But at this point, I was completely turned off and done with the WWF. I was pretty much done with it anyway. I only lingered around. After Mania 2, that was terrible enough. Um, I was strictly, you know, strictly a Crockett guy from that point. Um, and, you know, U UWF Mid-South, uh, that's, that's all I'd ever watch. Um, WWF was just became too much of a cartoon joke uh, for me. And so did the magazines pretty much right after this. Um, Hulk Hogan and Andre, the war is bigger than the both of them. Will they brace again and fight again? Yes, they will. Uh, Andre now at a whopping seven foot five, five hundred pounds. What? How much he's grown, right? Um, again, you know the kayfabe. Uh, the the, um, the stories continue to grow. His myths continue to grow, and so does his size and weight as he uh, moves forward in life. Nineteen eighty eight December Wrestling World against Bam Bam Bigelow, and again against Bam Bam Bigelow, uh, April of uh, 1988 uh, on the cover. Also, Ronnie Garvin uh, takes Ric Flair's title, which was another fiasco. Andre would have a few battles with um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who was not exactly the same Hacksaw as I remembered in Mid-South. Andre would be managed by um, Bobby Heenan, Ric Flair would get his title back from Ronnie Garvin. Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, uh, Hulk Hogan's worst nightmare, and they are about to face off again. The tragedy of success, Andre the Giant's unhappiest man, and you can see him welling up and actually have a few tears on the cover of PWI May 1988. And Andre the Giant's on the cover Inside wrestling, uh, April of 88, and Andre would beat Hulk Hogan and become the WWF champion. Uh, rightfully deserved, rightfully so. Earned his mark as a champion the way it should have been in WrestleMania three. 
And uh, we're going to leave that right there as him as the world champion. And anything else that happened after that, in my eyes, never happened. Um, at this point, I was pretty much done with the magazines, finished with the WWF, and Andre was pretty much, career was pretty much uh, over, uh, sad to say. Uh, in this issue of uh, wrestling, uh, pro wrestling monthly <clears throat> would be the... Um, the uh, death, certif uh, death certificate, death um, issue for Andre the Giant um, on the cover here one, one last time, and they run their story on, on Andre and his passing. There it is. So we had a look at Andre the Giant starting in 1966. Of course, his travels through Japan and Montreal, um, the different sizes and the different weights, the different championships that he held, a two-time tag team champion, uh, a one-time uh, IWA champion, tournament champion. Um, the list goes on of people who had pinned him, slammed him. Um, of course, you know, the guy had a, a, an untouchable career. Um, no one could ever achieve the stuff that he achieved. You're never going to see another Andre the Giant again. Uh, the guy was known all over the world, loved by everybody, even when he turned heel. Um, does not tarnish his, his uh, legacy one bit. Truly missed, truly a, a product of the times, because it's, like I said, you'll never see it like that in wrestling again. Uh, an attraction like him, when he came to your town, uh, arenas got filled up. And he would move on and go to the next town. And that was what was special about him, is that he wasn't in one place for too long, and it was special. Um, there is a look back at the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next.